everybody, welcome to another episode of Leveraging Real Estate for Freedom. Today is not such good news. I literally just flew down from Los Angeles to Sacramento uh, right now. Uh, because last night I received a text message saying that one of my rental properties has completely been flooded. Uh, I called around to get more details. Apparently, someone turned on the water main at this property early in the morning and left it on. We have no idea who this individual is. Here's this picture. Him and two other individuals turned on the water main and essentially just left it on for 10 hours. After about 10 hours, uh, the neighbor finally called the handyman to let us know that the house is flooding. And so when the handyman showed up, he's able to take some pictures from me. Here's the pictures. We're going to go inside and look at it right now. But essentially, uh, the house has completely been ruined. We've been working on this property for you know a month, month and a half, two months now. One point I want to make is that you know once you get to a certain level of success, people will fuck with you. You know, people will try to find ways and there's gonna be some haters uh, and there's gonna be people out to get you. I don't know if this is the case here, but whatever it is, the other thing is, you know, successful people are, tend to be very well covered, meaning they have good insurance, meaning they have a team of attorneys. You know, I have both. So for this property specifically, we have very good insurance, you know? So if you look behind us, we actually have the crew coming out to do the initial inspection. The initial crews to stop any ongoing damage and then the second part of the work will be to uh, remodel the property okay but right now I'm not sure how extensive the damage is we're gonna look at it shortly once the handyman opens the door for us I want you guys to know that owning properties and investment properties once you have a lot of them it's not all roses and rainbows I haven't seen the inside yet so we're gonna go take a look at it with you guys so let's go take a look at the damages let's go yeah, water. All of this right here yesterday when I came was so hard. Oh, water. Maybe my coffee can be here. Uh, uh. Here, pop it right here. Look over here. Big ass pocket of water right there. That's just completely fucking ruined. Was all this get flooded? Yep. Water came in through the closet. All that water was rushing down on here. This is called the crown of the forest. But when I got here yesterday, all of this still had water. I came back like around nine o'clock and it was still draining out. Was it police report filed? Yeah, but they said they were gonna email it to oh, me. Shit. They said they were gonna email me and they said that by the end of the day I'll have it. Okay. Yeah, the breaker kicked off. When the breaker kicked off, all the alarms started going off and everything. We had an alarm in this place? All the smoke alarms, they all yeah, started right. going off. Um, obviously, you can see on the walls the rippling where the water came through on the walls. The kitchen, uh, there was water all over the cabinets downstairs. Okay, so the proper title for the people that came out first are the disaster relief technicians who specialize in damage mitigation, which means they stop further damage from occurring, all right? What he said was that there's three categories of water damage, one, two, and three, okay? Category one, meaning only clean water supply touched all of the damage area, which means like running water that you can drink. And if it's category one, then you only have to replace certain things that are damaged. Does that make sense? If it's category two, which means there's some sewage water and some drinkable water, then everything that I touch has to be replaced. 
And in category three, it's the worst possible damage with sewage, water everywhere, which means that everything needs to get replaced. And so from what we're looking at right now, this is probably category two damage because there were a clean water source and there was also some sewage water source because the toilet got flooded and there were some sewage water that were coming out of the toilet piping. So this might be a category two or might be a category one. Uh, we'll know when we get the reports back. Okay, so the positive thing about this is that I want you guys to realize, okay, as a real estate investor, and if you own a lot of properties like this, stuff like this is gonna happen, and it will happen once in a while. And so instead of being very down about it, now's the time to kind of revisit your systems to make sure that you have everything in place, to make sure you have proper insurance in place, to make sure that you have your back covered, okay? Uh, and when you have a lot of properties, things like this happen, try not to be overly emotional, right? As much as like this sucks for me, I know that I have good insurance, I know that I have good contractors and good contacts. And this is just annoying, does that make sense? It takes time out of everybody's day. Today's Mother's Day, people have to be here away from their family to deal with this. It sucks in that respect. However, it's not a huge deal though, as long as you have proper foundation, meaning good insurance, okay, good contacts. So don't be, not scared if you're thinking about getting real estate and you saw something like this the point of the video is more so like here look at the problem and here look at the solution make sense cool see you guys in the next episode